four small, affordable scramblers that can do a bit of dirt. As much as I love adventure bikes and their off-road capability and their do-all attitude, they all can feel a bit same-same and a bit boring sometimes. What if you want some dirt capability still, but you want a bit more style and class in your bike? What if you're finally willing to admit to yourself that you really do want that delicious latte at the cafe and you're okay with it? That's where the modern scrambler comes into it. While they might not be as dirt capable or as practical as an adventure bike, they make up for it with good looks and style. Some of you might not want to admit this, but aesthetics plays a big part in buying a bike and the proof is in how popular these scramblers are. But style often comes with a hefty price tag. So I found you four small affordable scramblers to keep you looking classy and dirty. And be warned, we've got another curveball coming, so stick around to the end. Start it up. The first bike off the list is the Husqvarna Svartpilen 401. Despite having a name that suggests its use in a Swedish rectal exam, the Svart Pillen is one of those rare scramblers that is not only affordable, but has good looks, a great price tag, and a reputable brand behind it. Those are a difficult bunch of requirements to get together at an affordable price point. And if you want a more modern feel to your scrambler, then the Svart Pillen might be the one for you. Spec-wise, it's going to be pretty similar to the KTM 390. We've got the same little single cylinder motor. It's a gem, loves to rev, great in the twisties. It pumps out 44 horsepower and 37 newton meters of torque. Its dry weight is a response respectable 152 kilos or 340 pounds. It has a 9.5 litre tank or 2.5 gallons, which means that will get you around 300 kilometres or 186 miles, which is pretty decent. Seat height is 835 millimetres or 32.9 inches, so it hits a kind of happy medium. So in the US, it's $5,399, so like I said, pretty damn affordable. It also has WP suspension with 120 mil of travel, 4.7 inches for those of you in the US and that's front and rear. It's 50 millimeters down on the 390 ADVs and ground clearance is 145 millimeters. So it is a bit down on clearance as well over the 390. It should also be noted that the 401 gets 17 wheels all round. So it isn't exactly dirt capable, but it will still get you down the old dirt road if you want to. The Svart Pillen seems to me to be the bike to get if you're looking at the KTM 390 adventure, but you just can't get behind those looks or justifying the need for that much dirt capability. The motor in these bikes loves to be revved and has good power for the class and are an absolute blast around town and in the twisties. Aside from the knobby tires, the bike really is not designed for any serious off-road work due to the low clearance, the exhaust routing, as well as the 17 inch wheels. But I don't think you would have a problem going down some easy dirt roads on the weekend. Plus you can also go to the aftermarket to reroute that exhaust. If that's all you need to get down some smooth dirt roads combined with modern good looks, a price tag that's frankly astonishing, wrapped up in a great handling little package, the Svart Pillen will do nicely. Plus, you can bet your bottom dollar that if you turn up to an easy adventure ride, you're going to stand out like dog's balls. New kid on the block is the Honda CL500, which is heavily based on the Rebel 500 from Honda with a strengthened frame and a different gearing for your dirt expedition and Honda's proven 500cc power plant. One could even argue that this is basically a stripped down and lighter CB500X. You'll get that Honda reliability with the basic engine and chassis package having been around for about a decade now. So reliability is definitely not going to be an issue. Most of you will be familiar with the 500cc parallel twin making roughly 46 horsepower and 43 newton meters of torque, which is more than plenty at the affordable small displacement end of the market. Just like the 500X, you get 150 millimeters or 5.9 inches of travel up front. Interestingly, you get 145 millimeters or 5.7 inches at the rear due to the new twin shocks at the back, which is 10 mil more than the CB500X. This leads to a ground clearance of 155 millimeters, which is just over six inches. The CL comes in at 100 192 kilos wet or 423 pounds so that's a 7 kilogram saving over the 500x due mostly to the smaller tank at 12 liters or 3.2 gallons but honda state you should still get over 300 kilometers or 186 miles that's decent range for a scrambler so with that weight saving and a little more clearance on the scrambler maybe it might be a bit more dirt capable than the cb 500x who knows pricing hasn't been officially announced but it has been listed here in western australia 
Australia for pre-orders at $9,700 Australian, which is roughly seven and a half USD, which like I said, is pretty decent when you want that big bike feeling for little bike prices. I'm not entirely sold on the looks of the Honda, but with the Adventure Pack, it does have a unique look that sets it apart from the most other scramblers on the market. And while that bikini fairing isn't huge, it should do a nice little job of keeping some of the wind off your chest. However, I would prefer to see the bottom mudguard deleted with the Adventure Pack. I will also note that I love the blue colorway option. Like my summary of the 500X, this is the scrambler to get if you're wanting that big bike feeling with a small bike price tag and with arguably just as much capability spec-wise as the CB500X off-road, it's an interesting option and definitely will set you apart in the adventure bike crowd. And if reliability is at the top of your list, this is probably the bike to pick. Next up, we've got the Royal Enfield Himalayan. I told you there'd be another curveball. I put the Scrambler in the Adventure Bike video and I put the Adventure Bike in the Scrambler video. The old switcheroo. Son of a bitch. But before you whip out the flamethrower, allow me to explain. The major reason, other than that tasty price tag that the Himalayan is on the list, is because it already has that classic retro looks, so that's why it's on the list. All the others here are road bikes flirting with the dirt, but here we have the Himalayan. Not only do you get an honest back to basics bike with classic styling, but you also get a legitimate adventure bike that can be taken further than your grandma's dirt driveway, and none of the usual compromises that come along with the scrambler which brings us to the specs the heart of this motorcycle is what makes this bike such a little gem the 411 cc single is about as simple as they get in a world of overcomplicated techno wizardry attached to bikes these days almost guaranteeing you an unfixable breakdown on the trail and an expensive trip to the dealer this little motor is simple enough for even a muppet like me to do a fair job of fixing the power often gets poo-pooed as well by keyboard warriors who have never thrown a leg over one or need big numbers to stroke their ego. However, if you've ridden one, you know that while they only make 24.3 horsepower, the nice little dollop of 32 newton meters of torque is just what you need for that classic tractor factor on and off the road. This is a bike that's all about surfing that nice little wave of torque. And I really think that motor puts you in the mindset of you being on a classic bike because it feels like those torquey low horsepower motors of the olden days. I really think it's a great motor in a classic looking little bike. You get 220 millimeters of clearance or 8.7 inches which is more than enough for most adventures and is going to be more than all the scramblers on this list with an 800 millimeter seat height it also manages to be lower than a lot of the bikes on this list as well so that's also great if you're a shorter rider 191 kilograms wet is lighter than some of the scramblers on this list and remember this has all the adventure kit already on it ready to rock a major criticism of a lot of scramblers is a small fuel tanks of course which serves aesthetic needs rather than practical needs but the Himalayan has a 15 litre tank, getting you a distance smashing 465 kilometres or 289 miles. And lastly, a big advantage of the Himalayan is that 21 inch front wheel and both wheels are spoke, which is what you want when riding gets tough off-road. When I test rode one, I remarked that the Himalayan is the gentleman's adventure bike. Its sweet spot is wafting you along on the back roads and trails in a relaxed way, rather than most bikes where you're quickly in loss of license territory by second gear. This this really is the bike to get if you want a scrambler but with none of the compromises that come with a scrambler and with that paradox let's move on to the next contestant. Benelli has become one of those confusing brands over the past few decades as it's transitioned from a bespoke Italian motorcycle to being bought out by QJ Motors in China. That might put some of you off, but if you think of it this way, you get Italian design at Chinese prices. And there's something about the lines of this bike that really appealed to my eye. Well, let's dive into the specs. The engine is a parallel twin making 48 horsepower and 45 newton meters of torque. That's a nice dollop of torque. And if you haven't picked it up already, I love bikes with a decent amount of torque. One of those nice little touches that this little 500 has that separates it from a lot of motorcycles is a 360 degree firing order, which for those of you playing at home is what a lot of the old school British bikes ran back in the day. That's a nice little nod to the classics it's based off. So the suspension on the trail has been beefed up over the road going model. This means that you get 50 millimeter front suspension over the 45 millimeters on the road going version and travel is up to 135 millimeters or 5.3 inches. So it's 130 
137 millimeters or 5.4 inches of travel at the rear. You also get the much needed addition of more dirt worthy spoke wheels with a 19 inch front as I said which is really important for the off road and a 17 inch rear. She's a bit porky at 207 kilos or 456 pounds when the 12.7 litre or 3.35 gallon tank is full but that tank will get you a claimed 330 kilometers which is very nice for those longer rides. The final interesting feature I wanted to point out is the twin front discs. Not something you see at this price point a lot but I've heard mixed opinions on the performance of those brakes but I reckon with some braided lines and decent pads you'll be able to have the full benefit of those nice front twin discs. Great to see that on a bike at this price point. Now the easy thing to do here would be to bash the Lianchino for being a Chinese made bike and fair play to you as the Chinese have pumped out some questionable bikes in its time. QJ Motors has been in the business a long time and is one of the biggest manufacturers out there. Hell they own Volvo and China politics aside has made big improvements in a short amount of time when it comes to quality. They're not quite on par yet but for the money it's hard to argue. Maybe it's the tiny line you get on the front mard guard or just the way the lines of the bike come together and with that motor that has far more character in my opinion over the CL500 you might be willing to take that risk but if you're looking for an affordable scrambler with a lot of character then this bike really is a tantalizing option and at the end of the day this is what a modern scrambler is all about a bike that summons the good old days without the good old problems an eye catcher that can do a bit of everything including taking you down that mysterious dirt road if you want to most guys with their priceless flagship scramblers will pass that road but with these four bikes you can afford to take the risk and the memories i assure you will be priceless hit that like button consider subscribing and as always don't forget to stay shiny side up